let us try to understand how to find out the point of contract friction in case of the overhanging pin as shown over here so it is carrying the udl over the entire span length of 6 meter and a point load at the end so first step is always to find out the reactions rk and rb so we will apply the conditions of equilibrium that is summation of if y is equal to 0 upward forces are considered as positive and downward forces they are considered as negative so ra is acting in the upward direction rb is also acting in the upward direction the udl is 20 kN per meter that is for 1 meter length the load is 20 kN now this udl is present over 6 meter length so 20 into 6 is the total udl load this point load is of 10 kN magnitude so therefore ra plus rb is equal to 130 kN now we'll take the moment about this particular point that is point a and we'll start with this rb so rb will produce the anti clockwise moment about a so minus rb and from b to a the perpendicular distance is 4 meter so minus rb into 4 then this udl is of the magnitude 20 into 6 that we have already seen and it will be acting at the center of this particular so here it will be 20 multiplied by 6 and it will be acting at the center of this length so this length will be equal to 3 meter and it is producing a clockwise moment about this a so therefore it is positive so 20 into 6 is the total udl load and as it is a udl we are converting that particular udl into point load so that it can act at the center of this particular beam then this point load will also produce a clockwise moment about a so it is 10 into the perpendicular distance from c to a is 4 plus 2 that is 6 meter so transfer this negative term that is minus rb into 4 on the other side so it will become plus and we'll get the value of rb equal to 105 kg now substitute this value of rb in equation 1 so ra will be equal to 130 minus rb that is nothing but 25 kg So in this way, we have calculated the reactions R A and R B. The next step is to draw the shear force diagram. Now, shear force at A. The conventions for the shear shear forces are as usual. Upward forces are considered as positive, and downward forces they are considered as negative. So shear force at A is in the upward direction, so it is 25 kN. then shear force just at the left of the b so it is b left that we have written over here so we are not considering this point load just we are considering ra that is acting in the upward direction so it is positive minus from a to p whatever the udl is there that is 20 to 4 so 25 minus 80 so it is minus 55 kN shear force exactly at b will be there is a upward acting force of 105 kN so minus 55 plus 105 that is 50 kN then shear force at the c level that is just at the left of the c so again we will consider this particular area from b to c so 20 multiplied by this 2 so 50 minus 40 that is 10 kN and exactly at c there is again downward acting load so it is negative so it is 10 minus 10 that is c so we can draw the diagram like this so these are the various values which we have already obtained over here now this is the point of zero shear so suppose it is at a distance of x from a so if this is x the total length from a to b is 4 so this will be 4 minus x now we can find out this particular point of zero shear by applying the principle of similarity of the triangles so we can say that base upon height for this smaller triangle is equal to base upon height for this 
larger triangle. So we can say that x divided by 25 will be equal to 4 minus x divided by this height that is 55. So solving this, we will get the value of x. And the value of x comes out to be 1.25 meter from a. So this distance is 1.25 meter from a. And now we know that the point of zero shear will carry the maximum bending moment. So first we'll calculate what is the maximum bending moment at this particular point. So this is the point of zero shear. We have just extrapolated it on our main diagram. Now maximum bending moment. So we are calculating the bending moment at this particular section. So we we'll start with the forces which are present on the left hand side of this section. So RA will produce a clockwise moment about this section. So RA multiplied by this distance is nothing but X that is 1.25. So that we have written over here, RA into 1.25. Then the UDL over this particular length will be 20 multiplied by this 1.25 and it will be converted into point load. So 20 into 1.25 is the total UDL length for this particular length that is 1.25 meter and allow it to act at the center of that particular length and this particular will produce an anti-clockwise moment over here. So 20 into 1.25 that is the UDL present from this point A up to this section and as we are converting this particular UDL into point load, allow it to act at the center. So 20 into 1.25 is the load and the perpendicular distance is 1.25 divided by 2. So that we have mentioned over here. And when we substitute the value of RA, that is nothing but 25 and solve this, we will get the value of the maximum bending moment as 15.625 kN meter. Now we draw the bending moment diagram. The conventions are clockwise moments are positive and anti-clockwise moments are negative. So bending moment at point A will be zero. Similarly, bending moment at point C will be zero. Now we have already calculated the maximum bending moment at a distance of 1.25 meter from the A. Now we will calculate the bending moment at point B. So from A to B, the UDL that is acting is 20 kN per meter and from A to B, the length is 4 meter. So 20 into 4, that is the UDL load, total UDL load which is acting between A and B and allow it to act at the center. So we can find out the moment like this. So start, we'll consider the forces on the left hand side of B. So this RA will produce clockwise moment about this B. So RA multiplied by the perpendicular distance will be 4 meter over here. And this 20 into 4 will produce the anti-clockwise moment over here. So 20 into 4, that is the load and perpendicular distance is 2. So you can see this is 25 into 4, that is 100 minus this particular value. So it comes out to be minus 60 kilometer meter. Now we will plot this. So as it is a second degree polynomial equation, correct? there will be a parabolic curve from this because entire beam is carrying the UDL. Now this is the point of contraflexure. Here the bending moment diagram changes sign from positive to negative or we can say that at this particular point the bending moment is zero. So this particular point is known as the point of contraflexure. And suppose it is acting at a distance of y from the A you can say or from left hand support you can say. Then Extra, just extrapolate again this particular section on our main diagram so that we can find out the bending moment at this particular point and we know that bending moment at this particular point is what it is zero so what we have done over here the total UDL from this to this total UDL load will be 20 multiplied by this distance that is y so that is 25 and we have converted into point load and as we have converted into point load, it will be allowed to act at the center. So RA will have a clockwise moment about this section. So this is RA into Y first term. Then this 20Y will have anti-clockwise moment over here. So 20 into Y is the point load and Y by 2. So transfer this negative term on the other side. One of the Y term will get cancelled. So 20 divided 
2 that is 10 so this is ra is equal to 10 y or y is equal to ra upon 10 that is nothing but 2.5 meter from a so in this way we can find out the point of contra pressure so this is known as the point of contra pressure the point at which the bending moment diagram changes the sign or bending moment is zero is known as a point of contra pressure so in this way we can find out the we can draw the shear force diagram we can find out the point of zero shear we can draw the bending moment diagram and we can find out the point of contra pressure in case of the simply supported beam or you can say overhanging beam as in our case thanks for watching do subscribe to our channel for more videos thank you very much